the way they both come out of that at the same rate <laughs> is like very impressive. <laughs> like, damn. <laughs> It's it's Jordan and Todd level perfection. Yes, <laughs> love it. Welcome to another zany episode of Nerdy West Coast Swing, where the anchors are out of this world and the points don't matter. We are here to help you train your eyes so you can learn faster and dance better. I'm Cassie Winter. I'm Alicia Marshall. Um, if you're wondering who are we to be analyzing these pros, uh, Cassie and I both have extensive training and experience in solo and partner dances. Um, she has about 21 years, I have about 23. And uh, that being said, we are not here to put our opinions out necessarily. We're mostly here to just look at what's happening between two people. That being said, we are looking at the open video from, well, actually we're looking at two today. <laughs> we wanted to pay homage to last year's US Open, but since we're talking about Gary McIntyre and Susan Kirkland tonight, we also like love their 2017 Tennessee whiskey routine. So we're like, yeah, we'll do both. <laughs> the first video we're analyzing tonight is their 2019 first place routine. I'm going to pop the video in the chat. Go ahead and give it a watch. And then we'll get to analyzing. To the screen share. So we had about five or six moments from each routine that we wanted to go over on a uh, technical level. And then after going through both videos, we were going to just have a little more high level discussion about the, the similarities and differences between the two routines. Kate said it's whimsical. <laughs> That's me, whimsy. <laughs> the doodly do. <laughs> So this first moment we wanted to talk about is this really fast redirect that happens right there. And I backed it up a ways because it's uh, entered into from the back half of a whip. So you can see the context of the redirect. Because it happens so fast, even in slow motion, it's quite impressive. Mm -hmm. Let's pay attention to where they're setting the center counterpoint. So you can already tell that as the hand is slowing into its final lowered position, the center counterpoint is setting. Mm -hmm. But then while Susan is stretching back into it, Gary is already moving it forward. Yeah. And that's what creates the really fast redirect and a lot of power. And this is really relevant to basic technique because it's quite common actually for leaders who are first learning West Coast Swing to do this as their basic because they don't know how to let a center counterpoint stay where it's supposed to for long enough and they move it through space too soon and that accelerates the follow, even though that's not what they intended to do. So I just thought it would be a really interesting thing to highlight here because here it's very purposeful, has a lot of impact, is a really nice moment, but it's happening because of breaking the center counterpoint purposefully. Right. The way they both come out of that at the same rate I know. Is like very impressive. <laughs> like, damn. <laughs> it's, it's Jordan and Todd level perfection. Yes. <laughs> Love it. So this is the moment where Gary kicks over Susan. She grabs on and Neo's underneath. Yeah, that's a good way of describing it. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> it works. <laughs> I just love how excited she gets. Like whatever. Like they always nail things when they're performing, but she just never stops getting excited. No. <laughs> so um, last week when uh, we were talking about Jake and Mackenzie's wonderful routine, I highlighted a moment where uh, Jake used contra body to prep for a kick. <laughs> Um, and Gary here is doing the same thing. He's really winding up for his rotation. 
and throwing a lot of power into it and creating this tension across his side that's helping to bring the leg up. Mm -hmm. I had never realized how high on his leg she grabs, like, dang. Yeah. But that makes sense to be close enough to his center to not <laughs> throw off his balance. Yeah. It's interesting. I know in their 2017 routine, um, they did that same grab, but mm -hmm. uh, they don't move it. <clears throat> Yeah, because isn't that the one where she ends up staying on the floor and he pretends to like feel up her thigh? Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's a great moment. <laughs> and that's actually one of the things that we're going to end up talking about once we've gone through both videos, because there are a lot of similar patterns and moments that both routines share. Yeah. Both well, just slight differences. Mm -hmm. That's something that's really common with um, like the top level you know, first place, second place couples that are doing routines year after year, they do very similar tricks. It's basically the same trick, just slightly adjusted because they already know how to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, it makes it easier for them. And I think, you know, each couple kind of has their own thing <clears throat> that they do trick wise that they do repetitively yeah one thing that's interesting about the physics of this one is by the time his left leg meets the ground uh susan has a lot of weight into his legs so he's getting the benefit of being super grounded but without having to create the grounding himself yeah because susan is pulling his leg down into the ground mm -hmm. and he can counterbalance himself off of her weight yeah and so that part might look like it's harder but it's actually physically a little bit easier because of the way she's able to ground him yeah. that's such I a good ever noticed how like he lifts his leg up to help her up <laughs> oh does he i was wondering about that because i was looking at how much she was arching her back but he lifts up the leg too oh yeah there it goes <laughs> I had never noticed that. That was such a great catch. Because at speed, it's such an um, illusion. You think she's just back bending out from mm -hmm. under it because you're paying attention to her. Yeah. And, and the arch through her spine right here. Mm -hmm. There's also just like a lot of black fabric. <laughs> yeah. Hard to uh, distinguish. Yep. All right. Next we have, uh, yes, the one-footed spin sequence of doom. <laughs> it's like one-footed turns plus rides, just yeah. a lot of shenanigans. Basically, Susan gets on the one foot and doesn't leave for a <laughs> prolonged period of time. <clears throat> And safe. <laughs> so this is actually a really great angle because um, in last week's video, when uh, Jake leads Mackenzie through a duck, his arm that's connected to her shoulder and back is pointed like straight at the camera. So you can't see the full extension of Jake's arm. Mm -hmm. But right here, you can really see how much space Gary is creating for Susan to get under comfortably. There's there's space right here between her head and his rib cage, and she's not going to bash her head into his ribs. Yeah. Really important detail. And I think one of the things that I love about this sequence the most is the um oh man, it has a fuete pulse to it. Yeah. Even though Gary is constantly changing position 
around her. So we have this away energy right here to kind of like load up the spring. Gary switches sides of the slot. So that way Susan can then do the, the fuete kick to the other side. <clears throat> yeah. Um, for those that might not know, the fuete is um, when you bring your leg out uh, to one angle, whip it around, so open it, and then bring it in to a pirouette. So right here, that whip around makes it a fuete. Yep. And timing wise, when the, the leg is out, it's slowing your rotation. And then when it comes in, it accelerates your rotation. So it gives a nice um, pulsing timing and uh, breath feel to the turn. And that's a timing that's also really important to understand when um, obviously dancing the turn yourself, but also if you're leading a follow who's doing a fuete turn, understanding where that pause is, is uh, really important. Gary does a really good job of balancing her. Mm -hmm. This is a really inter interesting connection, how his uh, yeah. wrist is over the top and he's really hooking his fingers under mm -hmm. the top of her arm. Yeah. And then that switch right there, so she mm -hmm. doesn't get her arm ripped off. That has <laughs> to happen so fast. <laughs> and then, but wait, another duck. And then she switches. So now her hand is over the top and mm -hmm. she can really plank away for this last one. Yeah. Um, basically they're keeping it so that Gary's hand is just like sliding around her upper arm and they're adjusting the rest of their arms to keep that. Because that's the point where she needs consistency. Mm -hmm. I really like how each um, fuete kick was at like um, a one third difference around the circle. So one mm -hmm. was like pointed towards the flags, one was pointed off to the left, and then the last one was pointed more towards the audience. Yeah, those rotating spots are great. <laughs> yeah. I just want to know what it's like to be that happy. <laughs> like, they're just so happy. I just love it so much. All right, next one. <laughs> Going into a ride, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting because I know last week we um, looked at Jake and McKenzie, and they've um, the way that they did a couple of their rides was like um, their feet were really close, and he his leg was almost like wrapping around hers. Mm -hmm. um, but the way that they're doing this is different. Mm -hmm. So Gary's actually like walking her around. Yep. And that's part um, because of the way they're connected. Yeah. And that's why I put the bookmark so far back so we can see them get into it. Mm -hmm. So he's got with his right hand, her upper left arm, and then his left hand, her right hand, but it's his forearm across her upper back that's really creating that stability. Like there's tension mm -hmm. through the handhold, but his forearm is also touching yeah. the back. His face coming out that other side is so great. He's like, he's like, yeah, 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 we just did that. <laughs> Aaron said, that's the look of, look what we can do. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> um, and I love the shape she makes into this ride. Yeah.
And also the way she as actually purposefully looking down right here. So this mm -hmm. moment of looking at the audience has more impact. Yeah, like it's a little detail, but if she had been looking at us the whole time, this moment would have would not have sold as well. Right. Yeah, that's one important part uh, that sets routines apart is that there is an extra element of where you're looking at all times. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that line is gorgeous. Yeah, it's really nice. It's interesting to me that um, she, it looks like she keeps her um, leg rotated under herself instead of opening. So this free leg that she swings back. Yeah, she closes her thighs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, her, her, the top of her toes is facing the floor gotcha. rather than the toes facing open. Right. Or like out to the audience, <laughs> which is typically what you might see um, in people that have been dancing for a long time. Um, not saying that she's wrong or anything. I'm assuming she did it intentionally, but yeah. There is a rotation from the hip to open it. Yeah, I think it might be because of the shape she's finishing in, because then she didn't have to rotate her leg mm -hmm. at all to step onto it, and it made a really seamless transition. Yeah. That's my assumption. I would agree with that, yeah. yeah. But typically, you would see those toes being rotated open from the hip. Yeah, so for example, in this position, in this position, for example, we would see the front of her foot facing us instead of the side of her foot. That's what we are referring to. Um, Aaron said this is probably a question for later, but as a very new SD who has had his cultural immersion into a swing cut short, what does the open do? Let's talk about that when we get done. Yeah, yeah, let's talk about that after uh, we've gone through both videos, but that's an excellent question. So last week we talked about a fan kick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mackenzie's gorgeous fan kick. Yes. Here we get three in a row. <laughs> because why not? <laughs> now I want to see like Gary and Susan and Jake and Mackenzie do like a small formation team routine. And it could be called nothing but legs. <laughs> or just legs and guns. Yeah. Yes, yes. Anyways, <laughs> so we have one. Resist cackling like the count. Two. And three. The number of the counting shall be three. Gary looks like he's in such distress. <laughs> I would be too with that much leg coming at my face at that speed. <laughs> I also really love the way they, they prep into it. Yeah. Because it's almost as if they're about to do a fuete, almost. But then they're all like, made you look. And then she turns <laughs> the other way. <laughs> I want to point out, because we talked about this last week with Mackenzie and Jake. Um, if we remember, um, the way that Mackenzie went through was actually up higher, up closer to um, Jake's arm. And so she used her free hand on his like chest area to help stabilize herself. But Susan isn't doing that. She's actually using her free arm to counterbalance her by leaving it open. <coughs> you can see she's kind of holding on to his arm with that. Uh, right arm and her left is free. And that's what's helping her balance because you can't really tell from this particular position, but her extended leg is actually kind of more open to the right side. So she really needs that extra balance from the left arm. And you can see like, because she's doing it multiple times, she's, um, balancing herself like as she uh, comes up and back around. 
And she actually, I think the first time she puts her hand on his uh, like rib cage area, but then the others she doesn't because I'm assuming she feels more stable. I love how you can see the, the, the mini adjustment of how they're connecting like through here, mm -hmm. like she moves her hand relative to his arm yeah. to prep for the next one. Mm -hmm. Ooh, who has vertigo? I do. <laughs> All right, so that was the last bookmark. Oh, that's a good, yeah. yeah. Anyways, um, that was the last bookmark for this routine. Let me go and grab the link for their 2017 routine. I definitely had Tennessee whiskey like stuck in my head all day today. I want to dance to it really badly. <laughs> okay, I am this time going to switch to gallery view and then maybe maybe Andrew and Aaron, you'll do the doodly do with me. <laughs> <laughs> do the screen share. Doodly 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 doodly. Thank you. That was that was beautiful. All right. So the first thing really simple is this really lovely uh, ronde syncopation that they don't both do going into their next pattern right here so they both kick out and hook behind and i love the way that um susan releases her front heel and knee to continue progressing forward it's just really simple and that's the kind of thing you can do on your own social dancing even mm -hmm. if your partner isn't doing it but when choreographed and dance yeah. together like that it's just so lovely mm -hmm. well in that connection it kind of feels like um like doors on a hinge almost because you have that center counterpoint that's kind of just staying there, but then they're moving um, kind of backwards and at an angle to it. So then you go from having more of a connection um, from the front to kind of rotating it and it's more in the back if that makes sense mm -hmm. oh yeah this is the traveling split mm -hmm. this was wonderful watching it live so good like it looks really nice here like the camera work that they did but watching it move over the whole floor was really impactful and i love mm -hmm. the workout that they did with that and that's you know part of the choreography um really when you are choreographing a routine you have to make sure that you're looking at where you're moving on the floor and that's something that's not necessarily a piece of you know like social dancing or just like jack and jill you know any of that it's not so much a piece like it is to an extent but when you do routines you want to take up as much of the floor as you can otherwise it looks stagnant and it doesn't really look like there's much happening um, because everything's just kind of happening in one, you know, area and you want to be progressing throughout the floor side to side. Um, and they do a wonderful job of this. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because it's actually like a pretty simple connection that they have, like it's not super complicated. Yeah, it's simple and looks really actually comfortable to mm -hmm. just kind of live in. Yeah. And it's really the momentum that they get going into that that makes it really easy, right? So they're just hooking up right here. And then she's kind of dropping, but she is, A, adding some extra momentum from that right foot swinging around. So basically she is um, kind of connecting to Gary in a way that it, they have more of a shared center. So when they're uh, moving, it's not, there's not pressure on her feet. 
Yep. And then, um, so not only is his uh, left hand under her arm over here, and it's it's interesting. It's such an illusion because their skin tones match so much, and that <laughs> that part of her costume doesn't have a sleeve. You almost forget. Oh, that's a hand. But then over on this side, not only is she going to hook around over his shoulder, but he's bringing his forearm underneath her arm and across her back. Yep. So it's like her upper back is sitting on the shelf of his forearm mm -hmm. and her right arm on his shoulder is just an extra bit of stability. Right. Um, if there wasn't that like extra connection to the back, if he was just kind of grabbing up under, she would not be moving as well. She's moving as a whole unit because of that extra connection on the back. Yeah. Because otherwise it would be all of her weight would be on her right shoulder joint. And that's mm -hmm. not healthy, no matter who's, how strong you are, yeah. especially when you throw in um, this circular force. Mm -hmm. It's interesting to me that she has her front foot, the toes are up off the floor. And she's letting the heel glide along it. Because a lot of times you'll see, um, it's kind of what I was talking about earlier, but it be more rotated open so that the foot is not like flat to the floor. Yeah, because her back foot is rotated open. Mm -hmm. Makes me wonder if they're strategically using her pants to reduce friction right there on her heel. That'd be interesting. Because if you're a follow who's dancing long pants and mm -hmm. the pants have gotten under your heel and you've accidentally applied force, you know how slippery that is. <laughs> we've all been I, there. I have danced in so many costumes and I hate dancing in costumes because I'm always like, I'm going to step on something. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I want to highlight um, where Gary is choosing to place his steps. He's basically letting the front of his shin almost make contact with whichever leg of Susan's is progressing. <laughs> Mm -hmm. where they're going to kind of create a new center each time yeah. like there he does it again right there he gets right mm -hmm. underneath her lower leg right very precisely and that's what's allowing such a smooth transition of center mm -hmm. through those rotations right and if they weren't traveling as much it wouldn't, like, he wouldn't necessarily need to do that quite as, as intensely. I don't know, like, how I want to say that, mm -hmm. but you know what I mean? Yeah, because if he were basically just standing in place and just turning around, he wouldn't really need to be that precise with his footwork. He could just pick them up and replace them underneath himself. Right, and even but if they just did it and didn't travel quite as much even if they only traveled a little bit mm -hmm. um he wouldn't need to concern himself so much about that center counterpoint and yeah um, where their weight is balanced yeah as they're moving yeah this kind of it kind of reminds me of the physics of like ballroom pivots that travel mm -hmm. um because the getting this the science of those down right so that way you and your partner seamlessly uh, share and transition the shared center it's it's a similar technique here and because they are both so adept at ballroom also I think that's yeah <laughs> I want to bet that's her favorite part of the routine she's like yeah I can just chill here <laughs> I can just fly. I'm not working. Slide. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I just. Notice. So right yeah. here, because she, we have this heel thing. Mm -hmm. Mackenzie did that as well. Yeah. 
Yeah, seriously, they need to do a formation team of four. <laughs> need to see it. Uh, Aaron said like a 10 second break then back to work, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, breather. <laughs> I know when I'm choreographing, like I purposefully put in moments like that to not yeah. die. It's very important. So not quite sure what to call this. I was like Ronde walk around or fan <laughs> kick walk around. So she, she kicks around and then she steps behind yeah, him. So they're, they're hooking and she's rotating. Chris and I did this into a split. Um, oh yeah. But I love that part of the routine. <laughs> That's why I want to look at it. So they do it a little bit differently because of the way that they're getting out of it. Um, but she really kicks around and does a, um, like a, a kick that's even to her hip, um, which gives her a lot of extra momentum. Um, and I'm assuming that they're wanting that because she's continuing that spiral down um, and she needs a lot of extra momentum to kind of keep it going once she releases. Or at least to keep it as sharp. So the key things here are to make sure that you're stepping around the foot um, and you're trying to get the first foot as far to the like center of the back. So you can see right here the placement, she's very much to his right side so that she's not having to really arc around him. Mm -hmm. And then and he's gotten out of the way. Yeah, he's leaning as well. Um, and then she is trying to get that right foot as far to like the middle of his feet as possible because mm -hmm. then she's just rotating right around on that foot and stepping in front. Yeah, because right here you can see now he's split weight and you can tell that she had placed her right foot basically in between his, just behind him. Yeah, yeah. and, and so whoop, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, the farther that she steps um, on that first one around his leg, the easier it's going to be for her to get around the front part of it. Yep. And he switches back to the other side mm -hmm. to make it easy for her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can see him adjusting to that because she doesn't quite get to the center of his feet as she comes around on that first one. Mm -hmm. You can see his left foot moves in. Yeah, he kind of steps a little bit further with his right. Mm -hmm and then collects his left foot in a little bit. Yeah. So that she's still stepping around him. Um, but because of that, it's almost an illusion. Um, and it's only like that because of the adjustment piece. Yeah. And this comes to um, something I, I know I've like harped on like a broken record on this show <laughs> for the half past half year. It's the idea of contrast because for example, uh, if Gary were to just stand here split weight the whole time, Susan would have to go from here to here in the same amount of time. And like, yes, yeah. Susan is magical, but I don't think she'd want <laughs> to pull that off at that speed. But because Gary is splitting the difference with her and also shifting from side to side, it allows her to not have to travel as far, but you still get the effect, the illusion, like Alicia was saying, of Susan traveling very far around him. Yeah. Yeah, and at speed, you couldn't tell. Yeah. Like it happens so fast that it looks like she's literally just stepping, rotating around him. Yep. I, man, she hits the ground hard on her knees there. Like I never noticed that at speed because it happens yeah. so fast, but like. That's why it happens so fast is because Clunk. she doesn't have to think about it. <laughs> She's like, rip it, rip off the bandaid. Don't think about it. Just let it happen. <laughs> it's like her. Um, last thing to point out at the very beginning of this. 
right? <laughs> Aaron said, then after they get backstage, where's the ice? Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very much so. Dropping to your knees is my absolute least favorite thing to do. I just, I, it, I, it I refuse on principle. <laughs> <laughs> I've done a lot of knee drops. They're not fun. <laughs> So um, the, what I wanted to point out at the beginning of this was the way that they're hooking around. So <clears throat> if you watch her right arm here, I believe. Wait, there's another spin. Okay, right here. Yeah, so her right arm, she's reaching back around and they're hooking at the elbows. Neither of them are grabbing because she needs to be able to swing around his elbow. So it's like a monkey bar type thing. And that's, um, it has a lot more energy than you might think because of A, the arch that she has in her back. Um, and then B, she's also adding a lot more momentum by bringing that leg up level as she's bringing it around. Um, but even without bring that leg up quite to that level, it still has a lot of, of uh, um, momentum in it because it, like technically he could move his arm and like swing her. Mm -hmm. And that's basically what's happening. Um, just not quite as uh, obvious, but there is some like swing to it to get her around. But yes, yeah, so if you watch, because he's coming out and around, that's helping her swing. Basically, she gets two inches from the floor and then her hair makes it look like her head collides with the floor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They are the masters of illusion. Oh yeah, this is um, where Gary kneels. Mm, yeah. This is a fun ride. Yeah. But again, falling to the knees, or I guess knee, singular, <laughs> but still. <laughs> it's such an interesting choice. Yeah, and then the exit is just so yeah. fabulous. Mm -hmm. It could be so awkward. <laughs> yeah. And I love, I know I put in this out when we were talking yesterday, but he takes, I think, three separate moves to get up off the floor, and that's what makes it less awkward. Mm -hmm. But you don't really notice it because Susan is moving on him still yep you watch he's on this right knee he's leaning out now as he releases her he brings that left knee up under himself as well so he is setting it up so he can um switch uh his weight so he goes from weight on the right knee as she's coming around he changes it, pulls the right leg in. So now the, the weight is on the left. He takes a step. So he's in like a lunge position and then he comes up. So three separate movements. Yep. Because this is such a strong moment that if he were to like come out of it really quickly, it would um, take away from how nice it is. Yeah. And like you said, the fact that Susan is continuing to move is hiding the fact that he's still on the ground. Mm -hmm. It's just a really lovely choice. And the way he is still able to lead her in a proper hip catch and redirect for this turn. I know. Is excellent. 
he's leaning into it. So this is actually a really good example of a shorter leader leading <laughs> something like this, because you can see he's really planking into it to create that energy. <laughs> And then he's not trying to go over the head, like Phoenix said. <laughs> um, and then the other detail I really love is um, Susan goes into a one really simple Lindy swivel right here. Yeah. And that really draws our eye because right here, this is such a strong Luke Skywalker on the A New Hope poster pose. Am I wrong? It's exactly what he's doing. Um, <laughs> just add a lightsaber on the end. There we go. Um, but that's really drawing our eye. Those two lines converging on her hand are pulling our eyes up as an audience and away from Gary. So then we're looking at her hand. And then when her hand leaves the frame, particularly because of the the way this is filmed we're now looking at her face and look he's already halfway off the ground mm -hmm. and by the time she finishes turning and faces him again we're like wait a second he's standing when did that happen because of <laughs> how yeah. it was like constructed to draw our eye in a very specific way and it's just really cool i love that stuff illusion <laughs> I highly recommend um, studying filmmaking in that kind of way, because it can really add to your dancing, understand how to compose an image, um, because that stuff can really inform your dancing decisions as well. And if you choreograph your choreography decisions. Yeah. All right, what's this one? Oh, look, another fan kick. But just one instead of three. Yeah, this one is interesting yeah. because of like the way that she's getting into it she's extending the arms first and so she really has to have trust that he's going to be there because she's falling before she's really connecting to him yep all right so he's pinching that um like area right in between the the shoulder and the neck It's yeah, so, so sneaky she, how her right arm just connects yeah, right when I know. you can't see it. That's what I was just going to say. You can see she's moving forward before you can see that her arm is connected to his or her hand is connected to his arm. Right, so she starts moving down. And then she's connecting. And it's interesting because they are moving out of it really quickly. Right, so we have this fan. But then she is immediately traveling. Mm -hmm. So they have to be really careful about where they're placing feet yeah and I think she's just riding the momentum of the fan kick pretty much yeah yeah but um it throws her off a little bit to take that end step out and not together so as she comes through right here, she lands that foot like a foot away from the other one that's technically like her center um, balance point, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, that step is really going to throw off that momentum. So I know when we were talking about Mackenzie, um, last week I was saying that, you know, she kind of almost falls out of it, but they go with it. Mm -hmm. This is different because she is taking a step, um, but Mackenzie was pulling everything together. 
and really you should be closing together for it. Um, but yeah, I'm out of it, so. yeah, because what the momentum of her leg and hip wants to do is it wants to keep swinging back in that way. Right, drop right back down. Yeah, but because she needs to scroll in that direction, I think mm -hmm. the reason why she's placing it so out ahead of her is that's a way to break that momentum and yeah. redirect it. Yeah. And it's um, taking that energy that she has from the whip of the leg um, and moving it uh, sideways in the direction that she's traveling. Mm -hmm. So then we don't get that momentum going back down. It's going somewhat to the side. I love her hand position, by the way. Just I know. Just... All right, I think I've got one more. Oh yeah, this is another ride, but at a really interesting angle. So similar, it like they entered into it very similar to the traveling splits, mm -hmm. but she's shaped differently and it ends up being a ride. Right, she's not connected to him, he's just connected to her. Yeah. And this is interesting because it looks more complicated than it is. It she's counterbalancing herself pretty well. Um, so Gary does need that counterbalance to um, like move her. So he needs that you know weight to move around, but like the way that she has her arms, one in the front, one in the back, and then. You can kind of see she's um, a little bit further back than that standing leg with the hips, right? So she's sitting into it. So you do have that extra weight uh, in the front with the, the pointed foot and the extended arm in the front. Uh, so that's what's going to give Gary the extra weight that he needs to move around um, to move her, but she, isn't just allowing him to have all of her weight because of the way that she's uh, sitting into it. She's counterbalancing some of it on her own. Yeah, her, her contra body is quite strong. Mm -hmm. Opposing shoulders and hips. And just, it's such a gorgeous shape. Like I, yeah. I'm always, I'm usually struck by more simple moments that are just really unique yeah. in routines as opposed to, yeah, I just, I just love the shape so much mm -hmm. and the way they transition to the last moment of the routine by just continuing the momentum and letting her slide away from him on the floor. Yeah. Yeah, it's a really nice smooth transition because you're going from that circular and you're just kind of dropping it and let it stay in that circular as it's um, going down. I can suddenly hear you very aggressively. <laughs> Better mic this week, folks. So hopefully I sound less potato, but you can hear the clicking more effectively. So we'll find out how annoying that is when I edit later. So the reason why we wanted to highlight both routines is A, we're kind of just in general revisiting 2019 this month because we don't have an open 2020 and it's sad. So we're revisiting last year. But when we got to Gary and Susan, we're like, but Tennessee whiskey, because we love that routine. And this is a place where um, we're going to verge a little bit on opinion. And this is just our personal, like what we enjoy as individuals. And it's like neither routine is like, you can't objectively say one is better than the other. It's just that right. I know we, we prefer Tennessee whiskey and we thought it'd be interesting to talk about that. And if you guys want to join the conversation, you're welcome to. Um, do you want to start with like what it is about? the 2017 yeah. routine? So part of like putting a routine together is choosing music that fits the couple. And 
the one thing about uh, Gary and Susan is that they have, you know, very nice lines and very smooth and it, their style and their performances, I feel like, uh, fit better to a softer song. Um, and, you know, I, I, neither is technically better than the other in terms of, you know, like, points and you know what they're doing like how they're getting through things neither is better um it's more just that I feel they come through more strongly when they're kind of telling a story um rather than just being intense and that is my opinion in general I think that uh a lot of times you can engage more with the audience if you're telling a story um, rather than just having, uh, you know, a piece of music that you're dancing to, which is absolutely fine. But the other aspect of it for me is that the, the Tennessee whiskey routine falls under the West Coast swing category a little bit more. Like it looks more like something you would see in a Jack and Jill or a Strictly than the uh, 2019 routine does because of the music choice. And, and that's really the main difference is the music choice. Like they are choosing, you know, sharper movements for the 2019 routine. And that looks very different than what you see in Jack and Jill's and Strictly's, um, and, you know, social dancing. It's very, uh, it's a very different feel. So I just think that, um, I just really like their 2017 routine for them as a couple more. And I also, um, if you've never seen, they have a dinner show routine that is, uh, it's called I Wanna Hold Your Hand. Um, and it's fantastic. If you guys haven't seen it, watch mm -hmm. it. Um, it just, it really fits their personalities, like their performances. And so anyways, that's my opinion. <laughs> I'll try to put a link card to that uh, for the replay up above. Yeah, it's a wonderful routine. And it's just so interesting how song choice can have such a dramatic impact. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's funny. Some of my favorite partnerships in West Coast Swing at the champion level, I feel like they have a tendency to pick music that really doesn't showcase them as a couple. And they're trying to fit themselves into some sort of US open mold, <laughs> which we'll talk about more in a little bit because of your earlier question, Erin. Um, and it's interesting, uh, there was this year, I forget which year it was, but it was when um, Brenner and Tori stole first place classic from um, Jordan and Tot, and Jordan and Tot got second. And it was like apples and oranges because uh, Brenner and Tori did this incredible fast, shag foundational swing routine that was absolutely stunning you, you couldn't compare it to anything it was brilliant and then you had Jordan and Tot who for one of their first times did a really emotional routine to um Sarah Bareilles's song Gravity which is a really emotionally intense song and that is the only routine of Jordan and Tot's that has made me cry and it makes me cry every single time which I both love them and hate them for because <laughs> crying is exhausting <laughs> but um they got second and it just feels like because of that and this is just me theorizing right and this is opinion territory but like I feel like that second place almost we didn't get to see them go back to making us cry again they went back to kind of their their brand of first place routines. Um, and I, I feel like that that was a year, like if maybe Brenner and Tori's routine had been at a different year and Jordan and Tot could have won with Gravity, I feel like we would have a very different scene in classic right now. We would see more creativity, we'd see more storytelling, we'd see more emotion and we'd see less trying to fit into the mold of what a first place classic routine should be and seeing more routines that are really tailored to the brilliant partnerships that we have in our champion division. Oh, yeah, that's my my tiny little spiel. Not sure where I was going with that, but I think the spiel has ended. <laughs> 
No, I definitely agree. I think that um, a lot of the um, top couples uh, focus more on something that's going to look good on the open floor than something that will represent them. Um, and, you know, I think that to an extent what they choose does represent them, but I don't think it is the best choice to represent mm -hmm. them. And thank you, Andrew. He went and did the Googles, and apparently that was 2010. 10 years ago, what is happening? <laughs> like the fact that Jordan and Todd have been retired for five years now kind of breaks my brain. Because yeah. what? <laughs> what? Ah! Um, <laughs> but yeah, it feels like they, they pick songs that they can do well. And that really highlights their technical skills as couples. But I feel like we're missing the heart mm -hmm. and I feel like we started to see a little bit more of uh the heart trying to come through this past year like for example um Alyssa Glanville's routine uh with Dylan Luther and I really hope we see more of that and seeing more of unique character and storytelling that each couple is uniquely qualified to to bring to the floor Right. Um, yeah, uh, it almost another... feels like psychology. I like want to host psychology sessions for them. I'm like, <laughs> oh, I feel like this song suits you well. <laughs> Go forth and be brilliant. <laughs> um, another good example is uh, Ben and Victoria. They won their first place with like a really funky, like hip hop styled. Uh, routine and then they got second with their really like emotional routine but that's because I I think that that like funky hip-hop fits them better yeah you know and people so you know while they did a beautiful job with their you know more emotional routine like I think personality wise that's just not what we see from them um you know like day to day when we see them in events and whatnot I mm -hmm. think the, the prior represents them more yeah um, yeah Aaron said so like more about how you can use what you know versus show everything you know because you can yes yes yeah. and then um just a small tangent because I feel like soapboxing um emotional routines this is like a huge pet peeve of mine because as we all know I'm a writer <laughs> nah. um when oh, I <laughs> uh, yeah I'm not gonna specify which routine I'm talking about. I'm just going to generalize. But um, there's one particular routine where before the music has even started, both dancers came onto the classic floor with so much dark emotion. Like they were already like on the verge of having an emotional breakdown. Like that's how much sadness they were trying to communicate with their posturing and getting ready for their music to start. And then the song started and if I had known that song for 10 years, I probably would have been able to dial into the emotion of the routine, but right. it was a new song to me. And the way storytelling works is you have a beginning and a middle and an end. And um, I love this metaphor that I learned from a screenwriting professor of mine. Uh, the idea that you need to get the audience in the car with you before you drive away with them. <laughs> so they need to like be on board with the story yeah. that you're going to tell and the world that you're taking them to. You can't just like <laughs> bash them over the head, throw them in the boot, <laughs> and just drive off. Like, no, how did I turn British all of a sudden? I said, throw them in the boot. What is up with me tonight? But anyways, <laughs> um, so for choreographing routines that have more emotion, and I think this is what I loved about Jordan Tott's gravity routine, is it really slowly stepped the audience into the emotion with them and escalated it. So similar to how, when you're thinking about phrasing and the musicality of a dance, how you want to escalate over time the complexity um, and the <laughs> how advanced your dancing is, you want to do the same with emotion. You need to like create context so that way, <laughs> like if you can get the audience's heart to break during the song as opposed to assuming it was already broken beforehand that is such a really important difference and yes because basically if I'm expected to already be sad I get annoyed I'm like why do I care why am I sad why are we sad? I 
I'm, I'm a horrible audience member because I know too much as a writer. That's my problem. I know too much. <laughs> But I like, I, I totally agree with all of that. And I, I would even say that you really don't even need to like have, you know, the majority of the song be this, you know, starting emotion. You can really move into the story pretty quickly, but you need to have like a starting point to see like, okay, here's where we're starting. And then here's where the story is going. Right. So it's almost like a flashback, you know, mm -hmm. like kind of similar to that. Like it doesn't have to be like a huge lengthy part of the routine, but just having like a, okay, here's where we started. Now here's where we're at. Yeah. It needs to go somewhere instead mm -hmm. of already starting there. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, where am I? Yeah. Why am I here? <laughs> Can I go now? <laughs> and I mean, then... Oh, you go. <laughs> Having one level of emotion um, during a whole routine, it doesn't quite captivate as well. Yeah. And it tends to flatten out because so songs are dynamic by nature. That's what the phrasing is. Right. And by um, emoting the same emotion the whole time, even though you have this dynamic song, ultimately it ends up kind of like flattening the range of it. Yeah. Um, and then another thing to think about is like, when you're performing emotions, you're also acting. So really getting into your character. Mm -hmm. And I feel like as a dancer, you have to go method. <laughs> you have to really embody those emotions. Mm -hmm. And then considering if you're not, if acting really isn't your thing, instead of trying to show somebody else's version of sadness, you just get really honest and you show your version of sadness. Mm -hmm. whatever that looks like and if you end up crying all your eye makeup off so be it <laughs> drawing everyone in with you <laughs> oh man I'm like envisioning a uh Chris and um criminy ba ballerina Chantel, Chris, Chantel. <laughs> jeez my brain just fell out of my head sorry Chantel but I'm imagining a sequel to Chris and Chantel's routine same makeup but now like Jordan and Tot gravity style and then the makeup is like bleeding off of their faces more. Yes. Yes. Part two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shall, shall we mention that uh, he's coming back? Oh yeah. Not that far away, yeah. So on December 10th, Christopher Dumont will be back because he had so much fun. He's like, can I come back? And we're like, yes, 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 you can. Yes, um, you can. <laughs> and we're doing uh, an episode specifically on leader dominant dancers who also follow. So we're going to be examining, for example, uh, his dance with Brent Anderson from Jack and Jill-O-Rama 2018. Uh, they went right after me and Z. So if you go back to that episode where we talked about me and Z, it's the, the next dance after that in the spotlight. Um, and then next week, we are talking about Glenn Ball and Callum Powell. Is that his last name? Yes, I remembered. Uh, <laughs> their amazing third place showcase routine from 2019, history making. Excellent. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, shall we go into Aaron's question? Yeah. First of all, the open is like the main event where you get people from all countries and you know just coming from everywhere to compete um, at the top level and 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 that's something that you know you don't see as much in just like regular events um like there even though there's like routine divisions in some regular events like it's not quite the same like you don't have that level of um intensity of skill all the time necessarily um so it, it really like that's in my opinion kind of the main thing is it brings everyone together to be able to compete at a top level um and i think you know it, it's it's interesting because like you can uh, to an extent be like, oh, well, here's the top couples in, you know, our dance right now, because here's who have won. But, you know, it, to an extent, yeah, that is the case. But I think it's also um, really about couples showing what they can do. 
Um, and you know, that's on a very large stage. Those are my initial thoughts. <laughs> yeah. And then like logistically, it's the end of what is called the NASD tour. Mm -hmm. So we have on the one side, one side, what you're probably familiar with, the World Swing Dance Council, the WSDC. That's where our like individual Jack and Jill points live. But over here, we've also got something called NASD, which I, I should know what that stands for, but do I? I think it starts with national, but meh. <laughs> um, national Association of Swing Dance something. Snaps. I can, <laughs> I can do TARDIS, time and relative dimension in space, but I can't do nasty. So what's wrong with me? But it's a different kind of like <laughs> gather your points and win everything kind of situation. And uh, what's What's fun, if you go to watch the US Open next year, either in person or on Global Dance TV is Robert Royston basically on classic night <laughs> goes through all of the NASD events in order and he talks about each one of them. But the US Open is the end of that NASD tour where it's all up for grabs. Right, you'll see um, awards for what has happened during this particular event, but then you'll see the cumulative awards as well. Yep. Um, and both I think are important, but at the same time, um, the more cumulative ones are, they have more to do with who's traveling to what, um, more so than um, like how well somebody is doing in a division. Like it, to an extent, yes, that's what it is. But it, you know, if you are traveling to more of the nasty events, like you're going to get more nasty points. So yeah, Andrew said Ooh. National Association of Swing Dance Events. That's what Thank I thought. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> any other questions on anything we've talked about tonight? On the routine thing, um, I was like, <laughs> it was funny because I was like, I liked Ben and Victoria's 2017 routine better mm -hmm. than Dory and Susan's. It's like, I actually like their one this year, but I also don't know them as well as you guys all do. So I mm -hmm. probably haven't seen as much of their dancing, but mm -hmm. I really like the musicality in this one. And I saw it live, so that probably has an impact on it too. Live has a huge impact, especially yeah. for slower songs. It's actually minor pet peeve. It's a little not minor, it's huge. I blame my boyfriend because he has made me have high standards for video. But um, the videos for, for instance, Boogie by the Bay, they, they are in 4K resolution, but they're still like 30 frames per second. And I'm like, no, I don't care about 4K. I want 60 frames per second. Thank you very much. It's all I care about. There tends to be more 60 frames per second video out of Europe. Um, but I think Desert City last year had yeah. 60 frames per second. And it makes such a huge difference. Yeah. yeah, it makes such a huge difference when watching the videos because having those extra frames instead of just motion blur on fewer frames, you see so much more and there's so much more accuracy to what you're viewing after the fact and it has a much more live feel to it. Mm -hmm. So the day when we have 60 frames per second high quality recordings of classic routines is going to be amazing. Ugh, makes me drool thinking about um, my other thing that I was going to say is, you know, we're not saying that like any of the top couples, you know, are wrong in what they're choosing. Like all of their routines are absolutely fantastic um, from a technical standpoint. It's just more like what fits somebody better. Like it, mm -hmm. it's not that it doesn't fit them. Like if you didn't know them at all, if you're just coming into this community, if you don't know any of these pros, you're going to watch those dances and be like, that's beautiful. They're, you know, fantastic. And that's absolutely true. It's just for those that, you know, have been around longer and kind of know the personalities of the pros more, you're going to be like, okay, like that's amazing. They did fantastic. But I think that this other routine they did was better. Yep. And then there's also a place for just like, for instance, Gary and Susan have been competing for years and years together and they don't only do west coast swing so i, I yeah previously they were yeah and so um 
like I really love their experiment, the way they experiment. So while the 2019 routine wasn't my favorite of theirs, right. I really appreciate how experimental it was using a Argentine tango song for mm-hmm. a West Coast swing routine. Like I might have weird opinions about that, but I do really appreciate the, how experimental it was and how unique it was. Like, I love that. And I wish there was more, it'd be cool if there were like a distinct place for that for experimental West Coast swing, kind of like how Jordan and Tot do their showcases. They're like exhibitions, that's the word. Um, I wish other couples could also do exhibitions in addition to their competitions, because I think we'd see more interesting things. There's a place for swing content and for being correct and technical and on point, but then like what makes this dance so special is you can do so much with it and the champs are what show us is possible mm-hmm. and with great power comes great responsibility and <laughs> that's where I'm gonna leave it <laughs> well the champs are so diverse in their dance knowledge their dance styles you know it's I would love to see like them expand and use that more rather than everyone kind of doing very similar things which is also fine yeah but you know, they, I think that what I'm saying is that I really like people showing their unique abilities. I think that that's what routines should be. Because mm-hmm. they're, the, while I don't, the 2019 Gary and Susan routine isn't my favorite um, because I feel like for them it's kind of intense and I prefer, you know, their like Tennessee whiskey style routine. But um, like thinking of that same, like intense, Chris and Tara did a really fantastic, um, like really intense routine and that fit them really Mm -hmm. well. Um, So it it just depends, like, you know, I'm not saying that intense isn't good or, you know, it's just that what fits better. And I think that, you know, with Chris and Tara, they both did a really fantastic job of really expressing the song, being intense, like that fits them. Yeah. And it fits them as a couple, you know. And then I think at the end of the day, what Alicia and I really care about, and this like kind of sums up our teaching, is like we want to empower our students to make informed decisions about their own dancing, both technically and creatively. And so in part, what we're doing by having this conversation and including some of our own personal opinion is showing how diverse personal opinion can be in this dance. While, and there's still a place to respect the technique, the excellent dancing, the swing content, and the more like aggressive dances, even though maybe artistically, we would prefer something different but that's, again, that's just opinion, but our opinions are valid. And that doesn't make anybody else's opinions less valid. (laughs) And so coming to your own dancing from a place of like, okay, what do I actually want to be as a West Coast swing dancer Mm -hmm. is a really important question to be constantly revisiting as you learn this dance. And that's why I don't think with any other dance I've heard the constant parallel is like the better you know yourself as a person, the better you dance your West Coast swing. Yeah. And um, really being conscious about how interwoven those two things are mm-hmm. can really help empower you as a dancer and as a person. All right. That got Agreed. deep. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you all so much for joining us tonight. We'll be back next week to review Glenn and Callum, I am so excited. Yes, I love that routine. Um, yeah, and Showcase. yes, well, and yes, that is Thanksgiving Thursday. And yes, we will be here. So bring your turkey, bring your mashed potatoes, bring your pumpkin pie. We don't care. <laughs> All right. Well, thank right. you guys for joining us. We will see you Bye. next week. Uh, I hate how if I open the chat, the chat like scoots over Zoom, but then it also moves all the control buttons at the bottom. So present the screen was under my cursor for a second, but I had just opened the chat or something and then the pause recording button appeared and then I clicked pause recording and now it's recording again because I had to replay. <laughs> so, because Chris and I saw this live, we were off to the right side. Um, and 
it was just very random, but because I think this was our first year doing a routine and Chris was like super nervous about it. Um, but he was like, yeah, I saw Gary like, like uh, shakes <laughs> slightly <laughs> when he went through his like rotation. It's like, and I knew he, he got nervous too. <laughs> he was very happy about it. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> I'm not alone. Uh -huh. The only relatively U.S. Open-ish story I have, because I've never been to the U.S. Open. However, the year I graduated from Animation Mentor, where I trained in 3D character animation, um, I went to CTN, um, which is this great big conference in Burbank. And I get to the hotel, like checking in, and then my Facebook is all like, hundreds so of your friends have checked in here before and i'm all like Qua? what <laughs> and through a little little googling i figured out i was like wait i am in the u.s open hotel a week before the u.s open and i am not going to the u.s open what is what uh 